All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, double honors to the apostles, the great men of GMS, who teach in sincerity and truth and spread this world out of love. We've been doing it for 30 plus years. They're the true men of Israel, the true apostles of Israel, and salutations to the to, to the men in the four corners doing this work in love and sincerity. All right, um, through the spirit, I want to do a sit down because uh, a couple brothers in my camp was talking about a couple scriptures, and one that uh, stuck out to me was um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and uh, I want to start at um, the second, 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll start at the 49th verse, all right? And it says, And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, now I say, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, he would of corruption inherit corruption. Now from there I want to stop and bring up this point. Because um, the elect, the 144,000, first and foremost, and then the one third, we were the fruits from the beginning. We the ones that helped Yahweh Shai. If you go to Genesis 1 and 1, and it says in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. But if you read it in the Hebrew, let me get it. I actually have a script to say it. It's in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But if you read it in the way it was written, which was in the Hebrew, it says in the beginning, the Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Because you know what happened? Because you go to John 1 and 1, and it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, which was, and the Word was with Yahweh. And Yahweh, we know through the Spirit, Yahweh Shai is the Word. And in the beginning, when, in, in Genesis, Yahweh, which is the Heavenly Father, that's his name, gave the order to Yahweh Shai to create the heavens and the earth. And Yahweh Shai gave the order to who? The 144,000. We were the one, Lord willing, we those men, we were the ones who helped create this whole thing. So the scripture I want to bring out to back that up is um, Romans. Uh, Romans 8 and uh, 28. 29, I start 29. I start 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are the call according to its purpose. That's the elect, the 144,000 and one-third, for whom he did foreknow. Right, when did he foreknow us? Because he created us. Well, we were the ones who created the heaven, heaven and the earth along with Yahweh Shai. So that's what he mean he foreknew us. And I'll bring up the next scripture to prove that. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son. Right. Because when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, when he created the heaven and the earth, he made um, the animals, and then he created man. And he said, let's make man in our image. And the first man was Adam. All right. He said, for whom did he foreknow? He also, this is also the, the, the order of Yahweh. This is what Yahweh said. He said, let's make man in our image. Because what Yahweh Shai say, if you see me, you see the Father. So he is the image of his Father. And if he's the image of his Father, we come from him, which is Yahweh Shai, is the first Adam. We, down the line of history and generations, we look like our Father, which is Yahweh. All right? And it says, for whom he did for no, he did, he, he also per." He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Right, he's the firstborn of all of us, all of us who are the whole full elect. Because right now we don't know that we are the elect, Lord willing we are, but we are, but we, we got the hope that we are those men when Yahweh Shai was the first Adam, when we were in our heavenly uh, bodies before we cast down to these chains of darkness. I'm gonna get that next. We were out here. Building the earth because the like it says, in, it says in Ezra, the earth was built for our sakes. We built this for our sakes, for us to dwell here through the order of Yahweh. All right. So from there, we get Second Peter's, um, chapter two, verse four. Yahweh spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, 
and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved until until judgment. Right? What is these cat? What are these uh, chains of darkness? These that's that that, that earthly body that we in. So when we go back to First uh, Corinthians fifteen and uh, and uh, forty nine. And reads, and as we have borne the image of the earthly, right? So those are the, the the image of the earthly is these chains of darkness, man. Because what we get sick, this body dies. Uh, we get diseases out here. We eat, you know, what I'm saying we eating these poisonous food. We breathing this poisonous air. We we we, we drinking the poisonous water. Like this, the bodies that we are in, because since Adam, the Lord put it in, put our bodies into us to where this body will wither away. This body is made out of what? Flesh and blood, which is made of the earth, and, and, and our bodies, like it says in Genesis, will return back to the ground. So this body that we have right now is incorruptible, like the scripture is going to continue to say. It's, it's corruptible, so like it's corruptible, like the scripture is going to continue to say. So this body that we have now is going to, it's going to die, it's going to deteriorate, because as we get older, our body withers away. It's like a flower. A flower, you know, it, it goes from a seed, it gets to its potential, then what? At the, the time period, it starts to wither away and die. And that's how our bodies are. Our bodies are not meant to last forever here on this earth. But when um, the Lord comes back, our body is going to put, uh, no, the elect is going to put on that incorruptible in a moment into the eye. That's what the scripture is going to get into. All right. But continue on um, Romans. It says, well, finish up in Romans. It says, for he did for no, for whom he did for no, he did. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And what's, um, what's uh, conforming to the image of his son? When Yahweh Shai was on the scene as a second Adam, what did he do? He committed no sin. Now we being awakened in the, in the third day, like the scripture says, that we're going to do what? Learn who, our true, true, learn who we are truly, which are Hebrew Israelites, you blacks and near Americans, and keep the law to the best of our abilities. Because the Lord, when he was on the scene, he kept the law perfectly. And that's what we try to do here. But, you know, the Lord, he did come back in flesh and blood, but he came back as a, a man. He did come back as a man, but he came back perfect. And what we're trying to do, strive to be just like him. Because it says, he that dwells in righteousness is made to be perfect, right? That's verbatim. So we're out here trying to strive to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect because, you know what? We're not Yahweh Shai, and we still got this flesh and blood in us. And that's why he said... I will put into you a new mind. A new mind. I'll put the Lord's law, statute, of commandments in you. All right. So, and that comes with the incorruptible. Because what? What's corruption? Sin. And sin is what? And sin is the wages of death. So right now, not saying that it's okay to sin, but right now we're we're living in sin because what? We're born into sin, meaning that we live in a sinful world. But it doesn't mean that as soon as we come out of the womb, we commit the sin. That doesn't make any sense because sin is transgression of the law. A Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite baby, that's the only one that can commit a sin that's a transgression to the law, cannot commit a sin as soon as they come out the womb. But when he says that we were born into sin, it means that we live in a sinful world. We're going to be raised up in sin. Everything that we believe in, because what? When we grow up, we believe in what? Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, Halloween, Thanksgiving, uh, a whole bunch of nonsense that goes on. Um, what else is another one? Um... Getting shape ups. Um, some of our people are not even circumcised. You know what I'm saying? We were born into sin. We don't we don't know what what it is. What, when we're born here, we don't know what it is about keeping the law. But guess who does? The men and women out here who woke up to the truth. So right now, um, the, the 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 elect men and women being woken up in the truth because we're not born into this truth, man. Because you know back when the, um, we were born in ancient days. We live the law, statute, commandment. But right now, I, I know my parents, they didn't keep the law. They still to this day don't keep the law. They didn't raise me up in the law. I wasn't circumcised the eighth day. I was circumcised the first day. First day I was born, I probably got circumcised. It was the third day. I don't know. But I know me, my son, he wasn't circumcised the eighth day. He was circumcised, I believe, the third day. I, I think it was. The third day or the second day he was born. So we're not keeping the laws. So we're that's why we're born into sin, because we're not keeping the law. All right? So going back to... um. First Corinthians 15, and I'll go to the 50th verse. Now I, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither do corruption inherit incorruption. Right. So if you don't keep the law, statute, commandment, commandments, you cannot inherit incorruption. What is incorruption? 
And corruption is perfectness, man. Because what? We're trying to what? Be like the image of Yahweh Shai. Because when he comes back, he's going to, he's, coming, he's only coming back for the elect. And the elect is going to be the 144,000 and one thirds that have been out here trying to keep the law, statutes, commandments to the best of their ability. So it says that the corrupt cannot inherit the incorruption. So if you're not out here trying to your best of your ability to keep the law, statutes, commandments, the Lord ain't coming back for you and you cannot inherit incorruption. You got to come back in the kingdom being born through those men and women that try to keep the law, statutes, commandments to the best of their ability. And the Lord knows who they are. So it's not like you can sneak your way into this, man. All right, keep reading. Behold, I will show you a mystery that, I'm going to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Right, he said that we all shall not sleep, meaning that we all shall not inherit death. Because like the scripture says, there's some of you that will, be, that, that, that says that some of you, matter of fact, I'm just going to get it. Um, give me one second. Matter of fact, I don't even get it. It says that some of you that are not going to see death. Some of us are not going to see death, but some of us are going to be martyrs, but some of us are not going to see death. We're going to be here until the Lord crack that sky and come back through the chariots sent from the um, Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh. So some of us are not going to see death, but it says some of us will, will sleep. Some of us are going to be put to death through what? Uh, persecution, these uh, these uh, uh, FEMA camps, because we know the elect is not going to take the chip. And it's going to be to the point where when it gets mandated, it's going to be take the chip or die. So some of us are not going to see See, the, the chariots come back. We're going to be raising back the Yahweh Shah. The scripture is about to get into. We're going to be raising up incorruptible. Because you know what? We, we die for Yahweh Shai in, in, in our corruptible bodies. But when we get raised up with the Lord, and it says that dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So when we get rise, raised up, we're going to be raised up incorruptible. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for them incorruptible bodies, man. That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're praying for. And that's what we're striving for at the end of the day. We're striving for that incorruptible body. So the ones that die that die as martyrs in Yahweh Shai, they're going to be raised up first because they actually did the ultimate sacrifice for Yahweh Shai. He's the ultimate sacrifice, but in this, this corruptible body, we gave ourselves, like the scripture says, as a living sacrifice for him because he did it for us. So when we get raised up, the ones that die in this truth, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and teaching this truth correctly, we're going to be raised up in this with Yahweh Shai. All right, and we're going to put on that corruptible, incorruptible shalakia when we get raised up. And now the ones that's left here that, that didn't see death, like the scripture said, when they get raised up and to get beamed up in these chariots, they're going to put up, put in the uh, incorruptible bodies in the air, like the scripture is going to get into. All right, keep going. Now I'll go back to 51 again. Behold, I will show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, right? So it says, We shall not all sleep. Meaning that some of us are going to live to see the chariots come. We're going to live through Jacob's trouble. We're going to live through uh, the FEMA camps, the uh, uh, NATO camps, the, um, the pestilence, the famine, the, the, the race riots. Some of us are going to live through that. But some of us are going to die through that. And know what? Those are going to die. It's going to be the ones, those in the troop that died, the, the elect that dies during that time that's going to sleep. is going to be the ones that made themselves a living sacrifice for Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right? 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Right, so the dead shall be raised incorruptible, like I was saying. So when that trumpet sound, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, some graves are going to be opened that the, the, the men and women that died um, for this truth, for Yahweh Shai, they're going to be raised up incorruptible. So from the time they come up out of that them graves, their body is going to change from that corruptible into that incorruptible. And these other people are going to see it, man. It's not going to be a secret thing where, you know, only the elect is going to know. Because the Lord is going to show his, his, his mystery, his power through this, these, these miracle, miracle works, man. They're going to see the dead rising up out of the graves that died for Yahweh Shai. Because two-thirds of our people ain't going to get raised up out of the graves. The, the elect is going to be raised out of the graves. It's going to be the, the men that have been out in the highways and byways preaching because, you know, it's going to come a time. Matter of fact, it just came out where the FBI troops, uh, FBI um, ran down on that uh, uh, school out in um, Harlem. I don't know if there was, I, I don't know what organization it was, so I'm not going to speak, speak too much on it, but they ran down on them. But it's going to come to a point where they're going to come and try to round up 
us off the street, the men that's out here teaching the highways and byways, ain't gonna be inside of a building, we're gonna be, be out there on a Saturday or whatever day brother be preaching, that's preaching in truth and sincerity, and they're gonna run down on us, and ain't gonna be no questions asked. It's gonna be just shots fired, and we're gonna be gonna be dead, laid dead in the street. And you know what? Those are gonna be the men, the, the sincere men that were there that died, they're gonna be the ones that's gonna get raised up in that last trumpet. When the trumpet sound, when the house shot come back, and when they get raised up, when them bodies get raised back up, they're going to be raised up un incorruptible, man. And that's going to be a beautiful thing because our enemies, starting with the house of Israel and along with these other nations, they're going to see us getting raised up. Lord willing, we those men getting raised up incorruptibly, man. They're going to be like, damn, those are the real children of uh, the Lord, man. Children of uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And you're going to see that Yahweh Shai is coming and getting his people that was out there testifying in his name and preaching his word, man. All right? So keep going. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Right? So the corrupt, the corruption, which is this flesh, this body, man, this body is very, it, it, it's all corruption because first and foremost, our body, because we know what we, we battle with, what? Sin every day. Because the flesh is weak, like the Spirit say, the flesh is weak, but the Spirit is willing. So we deal with all types of sin every day. And, 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 and every, every brother has his lot, and every brother has their own temptation. The brothers and sisters have their own temptation. That's in his truth. Brothers and sisters, that's in his truth, have their own temptation that they deal with daily. So your temptation might not be my temptation. My temptation may not be your temptation. But we all have to deal with this. We, have to, we all have to walk our own path. Of righteousness, it says, "Let every man work out his own salvation." So your your lot may not be my lot, but you know what? We put on each other's burdens, man. If you're going through something, I'm going to bear your burden. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to fast with you. I'm going to help you the best of my ability to come overcome that temptation you're going through, and vice versa. If I'm going through something, I'm supposed to be able to come to you, men and women in this truth. No, men in this truth. A man is supposed to go to another brother, and a woman is supposed to deal with their man. I'm supposed to go to one of my brothers and be like, brother, I'm dealing with this. Pray for me. Fast for me. And we know we put on each other's burden. That's what the real love is. That's what the love Yahweh Shai is looking for us to have among the elect men and women of Israel. If we got a burden and we're going through something, we're supposed to come to each other and say, brother, I need your help. I'm battling this demon. And we pray, we fast, and we, 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 we meditate on trying to get over it with each other. So when it says that this corruptible, this, corrupt, this corruptible half half to put on incorruption because we can't get into the kingdom like this, man. Because you know what? These two-thirds out here who don't want to change, if that corruptible came into the kingdom, it will make the kingdom make the kingdom corruptible. And the Lord's not having that, man. There's no unrighteousness in the heavens, man. That's all that, that bullshit. Not to steer too far off the topic. You know, they say that, oh, Satan was the most beautiful angel and he got in his mind where... He wanted to be the top angel. He wanted to take uh, Yahweh's part. That's all bullshit, man. Because Yahweh is not having that in his kingdom. There is no such thing as anybody up there thinking they can take his spot. Not at all. And you know what? Two-thirds of our people, they would have that mindset in the flesh they had. That's why they have to die here. The Lord is not having uh, uh, corruption in his kingdom, man. He's not having that. And, and especially not Yahweh Shah, because he took the... The, 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 the worst beating, the, he, he put on, he, he did the, 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 the most sacrifice that any man could do. And he's not going to have that after he didn't die for the nation of Israel. So when the, the two-thirds come back, they're going to come back in their right mind. And the ones that are here and that don't want to get right, they're going to die. That's why he says, bring them hither before me and slay them, to, hit, which is verbatim, bring them before me and slay them that don't want us, uh, uh, don't want to, don't want me to rule over them. And that's starting with our people first. Our people are going to get slaves because you know what? The Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh has his, uh, uh, his men out here on the highways and byways telling his people to get right. And so the Lord is going to see, the Lord is going to see, Yahweh is going to see, okay, yeah, y'all mark, y'all mark, like it says in uh, uh, Jeremiah 16 and 16, mark them because they know what? They don't want to get right. So they are going to be slayed utterly before him because they don't want to get right. All right? So that proves my point why I said that this corruption, this flesh, because, you know, this flesh is a sinful flesh. I have, I have sinned in this flesh. The, 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 the elect have sinned in the flesh that they're in. 
And so we cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in his corruptible flesh. All right? Uh, keep reading. So when this corruptible, uh, go back to uh, 53. So this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Right? So this mortal, because this body that we're in can die. So this, this, this mortal man that I am must put on, if, if I'm the elect, the hopeful elect, must put on immortality. And immortality is what? Everlasting life. That's why Apostle Tahar put out that when we get the, when we inherit the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to die. Because what? Sin is the wages of death. And what's wages mean? Wages means a recom recompense. When you do a work, you get paid for it. Like, you know, I'm going to my job later, later on tonight. I clock in. I'm getting paid for those hours I put in. So if I put out sin, sin is what? The, the, the time I'm doing. So the payment of sin is what? Death. So the, the, that's what more, being mortal is. Mortal is the, 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 the um, recompense of my sin. That's why a mortal man dies. An immortal man doesn't die because what? Oh, a mortal Israelite doesn't die because what? He does not commit sin. And we're not going to commit sin in the kingdom of heaven. All right? 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Right? Because it goes back to what I was saying. The, 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 the. Oh, matter of fact, I'm going to keep reading because it's going to say it. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Right. Because the strength of sin is the law. Why? Because knowing now that we are Hebrew Israelites, that we need to keep the law, such and commandments. If we keep the law, such and commandments to the best of our ability, we're not going to be under the law. Because under the law is what? Death. If you don't keep the law, you're going to die. But you know what? Yahweh Shai paid that price because if you committed certain sins, the price for that sin was death. But he, he, Yahweh Shai paid that price to where if we committed them sins and we go back to the law and we sincerely ask for forgiveness through Yahweh Shai's blood, we can be forgiven unless it's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the ultimate blasphemy is what? That taking the chip. You can't be forgiven from that because, you know, you got the elect men out here on the highways and byways telling y'all don't take the chip. That's the ultimate sin right there, man. You you cannot be forgiven for taking that chip, man. Plain and simple. So when you get when you get the understanding of what sin is, sin is the wages of death, and and and, and uh, 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 the law is a, uh, the sin is a transgression of the law. Is what I meant. And you get the law, and you go out here and commit these law, and you you transgress get them get some laws. And you ask for forgiveness. That's how you receive thy grace, man. Because the grace comes from Yahweh Shai. So, that's the only way that you can say now, Oh, death, where is, your, where is thy sting? Oh, great was thy victory. Because, you know, if you sincerely mean it, you'll be forgiven. And you, and you continue to keep the law, statute, and commandment. You're going you're gonna, to, and, and you do the works of Yahweh Shai, the works that he said you need, that need to be done, you will inherit the kingdom of heaven if you're the chosen, man. Because the Lord knows the reins of your heart. If you out here perpetrating, then the Lord, is, he, he knows what you're about. You can't, you can, you can be the, 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 the greatest brother amongst your peers in their eye, but the Lord knows your true heart, man. The Lord knows your true heart. He knows if you really meant what you, what you say. Because, you know, you can sit here and, and, and say one thing, but your actions is totally different, man. You can still be out here committing the same sins that you ask for forgiveness for. You can hide it from brothers, but you can't hide it from the Lord, man. Because the Lord sees all. Alright, keep reading. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Unmovable is what? Dealing in uh, different doctrines, first and foremost. But unmovable meaning like, yo, you believe... And the law, you know that you have to keep the law. You have to, and you know that we're under grace, and grace is extended to who the elect. It's not extended to the other, uh, to the two thirds of Israel, because you know what? They're not going to, they're not going to change. 
the, the window of opportunity is there for them, but the Lord knows they're not going to change. So the grace is only extended to the elect, 144,000 and one third of the house of Israel, which are you so-called black, Latino, Native Americans. Yes, there are black, Latino, Native Americans scattered in other nations, but you're going to wake up because the Lord said my sheep would hear my voice. So those in other nations will wake up to this. So it's only the grace period is only extended to the elect. The Lord says he's going to gather his elect from the four corners. So it ain't going to be, uh, I didn't know, Lord, or anything like that for the elect. Because the elect is going to hear the Lord's voice. He says he's going to scatter his flock from the four corners. So it, 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 it ain't going to be to where you two-thirds going to be out here saying, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know because you had ample time to understand what's going on out here. And you know, you had ample time to understand that you are a Hebrew Israelite. All right. I want to bring this out. I'm going to bring this out earlier. This is uh, Proverbs 3 and 1. My son, forget not my law, but let my heart keep, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Right. So the Lord right here is telling you in Proverbs that we should not forget the law, man. Because, you know, a lot of our people want to say, oh, the law is done away with, the law is done away with. It's not true. The law is always going to be there. The Lord said, I came not to uh, do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And he fulfilled what? The law of the sacrifice. Because what? When we sin, what we had to do? We had to go sacrifice an unblemished lamb or, or he go or whatever the sacrifice was supposed to be for our sins. But Yahweh Shai came perfect. Perfect. Per, uh, it's perfect is not a word. But perfect than any animal could be, and, and, and anything could be. So he came and he sacrificed himself, him being the only begotten son, him being the first Adam, him being the last Adam, sacrificed himself for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, because he knew that only the elect, my sheep, his sheep, would hear his voice. All right? So he's the, he's the only law that it's not been done away with, but that's been fulfilled. That's what people don't understand. The law of sacrifice wasn't done away with. It was like, okay, yeah, y'all don't have to not sacrifice no more. But the law of sacrifice, the sacrificial law has been fulfilled because he was the ultimate sacrifice. You cannot sacrifice anything else greater than Yahweh Shai to atone for your sins. You still have the day of atonement, but even that is not even acknowledged without Yahweh Shai. All right? So that's the only law that we don't have to continue to do. I ain't going to say keep because you keep that sacrificial law by believing in Yahweh Shai. And that's another thing. People don't understand that. We still keep this uh, sacrificial law by believing in Yahweh Shai. Alright? So, other than that, all the other laws is still intact, man. All the other laws are still intact. So, when it says here, my son, forget not my law and let thy heart keep my commandments. So that means everything that's been said in the first five books of the Bible, first five books of Moses, is still intact to this day, man. We have to keep the Sabbath, Sabbath law. We have to keep the marriage law. We have to keep the dietary law, etc., etc. We still have to keep the law, man. All 613 of them. We still have to keep, man. All right? So uh, bring out this last script. Um, this is Romans. Um, nah, uh, I'll bring out 1 John 3 and 4. So just close my point. So Alright, this is first John chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. I said this earlier, but the point is that if you want to call yourself you know, in this truth, but you don't think that we have to keep the law, that's a lie. Because the only reason why this body that we're in is corruptible is because we sin. And the scripture says sin is the transgression of the law. So if you want to call yourself being in this truth and you one day want to hope for salvation, which is putting on that incorruptible, you have to keep the law, man. You have to keep the law. To your best of your ability. Now I know there's some laws out here that we cannot keep. You know. But you try to keep them for the best of your ability. And you have to understand that the, the only way you transgress the law. I mean you commit sin. Is by transgressing the law. And you Israelites. That's all I need to know is You Israelites. 
need to understand that, that sin is a transgression of the law. So the law is not done away with. You cannot say I committed sin because what? You have an um sex with your boyfriend. A lot of people think that's a sin. And I'm gonna clear that up. If we live in an adulterous nation, not to get too far off point, we live in an adulterous nation. If you're if a, if you're a woman and you're not with the first man you slept with, yes, you committed adultery. Absolutely. But you are forgiven from that sin because when you did it, you didn't know. Now, if you have a man now and you leave your man for you leave your man for any reason, uh, uh, you, you leave your man for any reason, and you go on to another man, you committed adultery. After you know this, you committed adultery. And a man, if you sleep with a woman that has a man, you're committing adultery. And if you out here just sleeping with Israelite women and and you're not keeping them, you're committing you're committing fornication. If you commit a, 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 a sexual act, like popping a woman in the ass, uh, all types of other sexual uh, uh, abominations, those are sins. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the one point I want to make, man. You 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 y'all people think out there that having sex with with a woman and that's your because she's your girlfriend. Y'all not. Americanized married, you think that's a sin. That's not according to this, man. There's no, there's no, there's no law saying in this Bible that you need to go to the courthouse and get a piece of paper and a certificate uh, and she needs to get in the white gown and walk down the aisle and she, and that's how you, y'all marry. No, because what is marriage? Marriage is two flesh. According to the Bible, man and woman having sex is marriage, put it that way. All right? And marriage to the most high is us keeping this law, statute, commandments that's written in this book, man. So if you want to be married to the Most High, you need to keep His law, statutes, commandments. And if you're not, you're committing adultery to the Most High, because that means that you're dealing with these other national, these other uh, um, religions, and um, you're committing uh, adultery, idolatry, and adultery to the Most High. All right. So with that being said, I'm gonna close up. I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles of GMS, and salutations to you brothers out there keeping the word, keeping the truth. Keeping the foundation of this thing that our apostles have taught us through Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Alright? Shalom.